we invite a guest back, that means that guest must have been pretty good. <laughs> And more than pretty good, Dr. Angela DeRosa is here. Introduce yourself by specialty. Uh, talk to everybody about what it is that you do when you're not on television. <laughs> well, when I'm not on television, of course. Um, I am an internal medicine physician, but I specialize in women's health care. Uh, so what that really means is as an internist, I can take care of all adults, but I found during my residency that uh, women were coming to me in droves and I felt inadequately prepared in just doing a straight internal medicine residency that I thought, why don't I create a fellowship in women's health? So I went on and did that extra time and extra effort in that and it turned out great because now I have tons of female patients. But the good news is, is now their female patients are dragging their husbands in to see me, which is even more fun. <laughs> right, and dragging is probably the appropriate term, isn't it, huh? Well, as I always say, there's two ways to get a, a man to a doctor. Number one, in an ambulance, or number two, with erectile dysfunction. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, we see more ads about that than almost anything. Ah, but with mm. women, what do we see? Depressed. Oh, yes. Feeling those pangs of depression. Mm -hmm. Well, just take this, pop this, mm -hmm. uh, use this, get a prescription <laughs> over the counter, and then it will all be all right. Oh, yes. We're all, will it? We're all looking for that little magic pill if it's not for erections or um, for weight loss, but in particular, um, depression. So when we look at our society today, we're losing our ability to cope because we're to being told that we shouldn't be angry or sad at all. So, and unfortunately, doctors are willing co-conspirators. We just give out these pills because it's easier to do that than actually get to the root of the psychological issues or even medical issues. But sad isn't depression. No, it's appropriate to be sad. If you have a grief reaction, if someone passes away or you've lost a job or are undergoing a lot of financial stress, which a lot of people are going through right now in this economy, it's appropriate to be down or blue. We shouldn't be blunting people's responses. All right, but recent studies have suggested that <laughs> There are too many doctors uh, who instantly <laughs> prescribe antidepressants for oh, yeah. almost everything. Uh, and, and I mean, we're sitting in a doctor's office mm -hmm. and the doctor says, okay, well, I'm gonna write your script. I'm gonna write your oh. script, right? And uh, why are they doing it with the abundance uh, that they are? Well, first off, our patients are coming in demanding it. They see these television ads or their friends on it or they know someone's son is on it. They think that these are going to be the be all end all and help people feel better so that they don't have to deal with their emotions. And in, in fact, doctors find it or have such little time in order to spend with their patients that it's easier to write a script than it is actually to spend the time, talk with them, find out what's really going on. That's why there are so many depressed mm -hmm. doctors, I guess, too. <laughs> huh? uh, depressed or a little bit manic, I'm not sure which. Uh, are you antidepressant? Are you anti-antidepressant? No. no, I think it, that when you look at antidepressants, we need to use them as a last effort. So when we look at patients medically, most often depression's coming from testosterone deficiencies. In men and women, as we get older, we lose our te testosterone, which is naturally made in our bodies. And I said women in particular because men and women both make testosterone, and it is Mother Nature's serotonin. So when we lose that testosterone, our serotonin stops firing in the brain as easily, and we start to get mood disorders, anxiety, depression, panic, suicidal tendencies in some people. And the problem is, is people are going in with those symptoms, the doctors aren't recognizing them as being testosterone deficiencies, and they just give them antidepressants, which ultimately leads to worse um, depression, which is unfortunate. Now, guys, of course, obviously have mood swings, uh, but we never see them used as the poster person uh, for mood <laughs> no. swings. And no. so um, whether it's uh, the, the menstrual cycle or whether it's uh, the absence of testosterone or whatever it is, uh, it is almost always associated with some kind of hormonal imbalance mm -hmm. going on in the girls. But men actually get testosterone deficiencies as well. But when you look at the timeline, women typically get them starting in their 30s. Men typically start getting them in their 40s. And if you look at society today, marriages are falling apart typically in 30s and 40s. It's because those mood disorders are starting in both the men and women. So women don't want to have sex, which we often think about libido states, which lead, the testosterone deficiency also leads to weight gain. And then you throw antidepressants on, which ultimately lead to lowered testosterone, how it processes in the body. So those antidepressants are actually making those things worse in the long run. So now you have a relationship with no sex, the woman's getting fat, the man doesn't feel it, and things start falling apart. It's ruining families. And then we give antidepressants to make everybody cope. Yeah, well, what about the PMS image of the woman 
uh, <laughs> coming to dinner with a machete. <laughs> Well, it's oftentimes that's deserved. <laughs> All kidding aside, unfortunately, the women are labeled as the ones who are were depressed, were moody, and but men are equally affected by depression. But they tend to not ask for help and seek out help as often. As we women. don't we don't take uh, antidepressants anywhere near as often as women, right? Well, you'd be surprised. Actually, they do. They're just not as talked about in men. In our, <laughs> I know. You mean in, in, in the in the country club <laughs> locker room? Yes, no. we are. We don't talk about it. Though, but ironically, we'll talk about their erectile dysfunctions, but they don't want to talk about being depressed, which those <laughs> antidepressants actually will lead to erectile dysfunctions, which makes them even more depressed. Excuse me. Pardon me. I'm going to ask the doctor to repeat that. Pardon me. Excuse me. What did you say? That when men get erectile dysfunctions, yes. it makes them even more depressed. And antidepressants will actually cause erectile dysfunctions in men. There's no hope for equipment. That's all there no, is to it. No, absolutely not. I mean, the whole concept of physics, levers, balances, <laughs> all of those things, it's all out the window. Uh, when should we reasonably use antidepressants? At what mm -hmm. point, if, if the patient is the one who is promoting the use of this by insisting that the doctor prescribe, mm -hmm. then we ought to also have some kind of information mm -hmm. about when it is appropriate. Absolutely, and not to say that patients are always the ones demanding it. I think doctors are, are equally as guilty as giving them out easily like candy. But w if you take the time to talk to patients, so at our practice, we spend an hour or two with all of our new patients. We evaluate them physically, take a good psychosocial history. We look at their labs to make sure there's no hormonal imbalances that could be drawing causing antidepressant like testosterone deficiencies. Mm -hmm. And you treat those underlying causes. We want to get to the root problem because if you don't treat those testosterone deficiencies, those antidepressants aren't going to work in the long run. So once you rule out all medical issues and spend time talking to people, you might not even need an antidepressant. But let's say we find at the end we are left with a chemical imbalance or something that's pretty severe. Then it's appropriate to use antidepressants. But you also need to know what side effects they can cause before you prescribe them. Yeah, well, besides ED, what else? Well, so Certainly it can cause weight gain in some folks. Some are less apt to do that than others. It, you look at um, patients often get a bluntation in their effect, so meaning they don't feel anything anymore. They're just flatlined. Or some people have sleep disorders due to them, or you hear about people getting up in the middle of the night driving around in their cars. We've had multiple patients come in, they've been arrested for DUIs, even though they weren't drinking, but were on medications that affected them. There was a newspaper article mm -hmm. yesterday about, yeah. uh, about impaired driving mm -hmm. while using drugs, not all of them recreational. Absolutely. Oh, okay, but I know somebody, <laughs> I know somebody who would no more skip a Prozac mm -hmm. uh, than anything because she really felt terrible and her mm -hmm. moods were dramatically different mm -hmm. when she didn't use them. Well, certainly when you don't use them, a lot of people go through withdrawal if they try to come off of them because that's the Prozac, for instance, is a very strong serotonin drug in the brain. And they will give that sense of, I guess, euphoria for some people or at least let them cope and tolerate. The problem is, is before we put those patients on those antidepressants, nobody's actually looking at the root causes. Is it a testosterone deficiency? Are there estrogen deficiencies going on? Or is there something going, let's say their husband's just not that great of a guy and their life just really is terrible to live in and they don't want to face that reality so they blunt themselves. You need to get to the bottom of that first before you use those drugs. Unfortunately, there's now a whole generation of women and men who are on these drugs who are going to struggle to come off if we don't get the testosterone replaced at the baseline. Okay, so it's up to you now, see. You're mm -hmm. going to have to talk to the doctor and you're also going to have to say, listen, no matter what you say, mm -hmm. I happen to hear from Dr. Angela DeRosa on the morning scramble that I better start asking some other questions besides what kind of a pill can you give me. This is the morning scramble on a Tuesday.